Good morning. Merry Christmas to all of you. It's good to see all of you here this morning. We're so happy that you're here. And, you know, this morning even all the children are going to join us. And, uh, you know, it's just good to see all of you and see your smiling faces. That's the blessing of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to please stand to your feet and let's go to the Lord this morning with thankful hearts. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we rejoice this morning, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to be in your house, Lord. And we come with one purpose, and that is to honor you, to worship you, Lord, to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Lord, you have been so good to us, Father, Lord, and there's so much to be thankful this for us this morning. You saved our lives, Lord. You gave us hope. You gave us life, Father. Lord, you've given us so much, and we are so thankful, Father, for what you have done in our lives. Lord, this morning, we just want to love you, Lord, and we just want to honor you. We praise your holy name. We pray in the name of Jesus, and everyone said, praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Everything changes. Everything changes. Come on, man. 
Angels come with words of wonder. But they need heart sings hallelujah. Freedom from the curse we're under. But the heart sings hallelujah. Everything changes. Everything changes. Incarnation. He's come to seek and bring salvation. Everything changes. Everything changes.
King of heaven, born love to save me. Gracious Redeemer, looked upon me long before Eden.
praise God. Amen. You know, I, I as I grow older, as a as a man, I I thank God more and more every year when I think about Christmas. You know, I think about where Jesus found me and where I am today. You know, Jesus is a wonderful God. You know, there's no sin in heaven, my brothers and my sisters. And to whoever may be hearing this message this morning, Jesus is the answer. You know, when I was in the world, I didn't have any peace. I was, I was messed up on drugs and gang activity. I was totally messed up. I was like the black sheep of my family. I was the rejection of my family because of my life that I lived. But when Jesus came into my heart, hallelujah, now I got peace. Now I got joy. You know, and it's not just for me. It's for everyone. Whosoever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Receive him today. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, receive him. Ask him into your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me, Lord, of my sins, Lord. Lord, help me and teach me to live for you, God. And he'll do it. He'll come into your heart. And he'll transform you forever. Hallelujah. And here on this earth, we're just training to reign with him forever. We're not going to be here forever. You know, I'm 62 years old, you know. And I, I, I remember when I was 18, I gave my heart to Jesus when I was 18 years old. It's a young age. I, I think about that now. And I said, well, how did I recognize my need of the Lord at 18 years old? When, man, I could have still been partying and doing my thing out there in the world. Jesus knew when my time was. And that very moment, that brother in church, not too far from here, Pastor John was preaching a message. And I invited Jesus into my heart. I saw the love of the people. The Lord drew me by the love I saw in the people's lives, loving each other. They were happy. I wanted happiness. I wasn't happy being a drug addict. I was miserable. I was, I was, I mean, left bankrupt, like left for dead, like nothing. I, I remember waking up sometimes and I would wake up on, on the grass, the wet dew of the grass, totally hung over. And, and, and I didn't know anything about life. I really didn't have too many mentors to point me to Jesus. But one day my aunt used to invite me to church and said, Gabriel, come to church with me. God loves you. I said, God loves me? How, nobody loves me. That's the way I used to think back in the day. Oh, but th I thank God today that I invited him into my heart. And he totally transformed my life. I have a hope for living. We, li we serve a living God. We live a, a serve a God that's alive today. God is alive today. And he wants to come into your heart. And he wants to transform your life. And then he wants to use you for his glory and for his honor. God doesn't just save us. He just he saves us to use us to be a beacon of light for him. Amen. To let your light shine this morning, my brothers and my sisters. Let your light shine before men that God may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you this morning, God. I thank you that for God so loved the world that he gave his son, Lord. And as we are reminded, Lord, this Christmas, Lord, when we remember that, Lord, and not get so caught up with the gifts and the toys and the, and the lighting and everything else and the festivities, the food, Lord, help us to remember you, Jesus. For you loved us so much that you gave your only son, Lord. You paid the ultimate price for us sinners. We were lost, but now we are found because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. May no one here sitting here, God, go leave here without receiving you into their hearts, Lord. You're a wonderful God, Lord. You are fulfilling, God. You satisfy. You satisfy the longing soul, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love you this morning, Father. Continue to bless this service, Lord. And may you bless every family here for Christmas, Lord. Bless the time they have with their families. Bless all the gifts. Bless everything, Lord. And as we are reminded what you did for us this Christmas, Lord. And Lord, remember, Lord, my dear wife, she's not feeling good this morning, but I pray for her this morning, God, that you bless her, God, that you heal her body, God, and make her whole, God. We still believe by faith that by your stripes we were healed, oh God, of all sickness and all disease. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And there may be others here that are sick in body and couldn't make it today. Touch them this morning, Lord. Lord, remind them of you, Lord. Remind you. Remind them of the season, Lord, that for God so loved the world that he gave, Lord. Oh, God, fill every heart here in a special way. Bless every family, God. And for it all, God will give you all the praise and all the glory. And all of God's people shouted, 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gabriel. You may be seated. Just want to remind you that tonight we will not be having our evening worship time, our evening service, and next week is going to be, we're going to follow the same schedule as today, so that you can uh, you know allow some time to spend time with your family. So make sure you keep that in mind, and uh, you know, Lord willing, by next week we'll be able to show you the uh, patio. What a brother Joe! He's done a great job putting it all together, and and. Uh, Yes, he's been the, the man behind all of this. But, and, uh, you know, it, 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 just, it just doesn't look like the same room anymore. So praise God. And, you know, we still need a little bit of help. I know we have some extra expenses that we needed to do. Uh, so whatever you can do, that will be appreciated. And I know, uh, I know you'll enjoy that room now. It's, now you don't have to worry about stepping and sinking in or anything like that. Now it's going to be it's on solid ground, right? Just like the Bible says, you know, we need to have a good foundation. And believe me, now it has a, a foundation that will last till I think we'll be gone before that anything happens to that building. Amen. So praise God for that. The office will be closed also. So uh, I think uh, it's going to be a time that is going to be well deserved for vacation. Have you enjoyed this? Do you enjoy this season? Amen. I know I do. I really do. Wherever you are, looking at the trees, looking at the lights, the, the colors and everything, it's something uh, beautiful about Christmas. And, you know, one thing I was realizing the other day is this, that, you know, when we uh, celebrate a birthday, I know when they celebrate my birthday, guess who gets the gifts? I do, because it's my birthday. And, you know, it's something that when it's Jesus' birthday, he doesn't get the gifts. He's like, everybody else gets gifts, and Jesus doesn't give gifts, right? So I just want to remind you that it is Jesus' birthday. So let's be faithful in our giving. Let's be faithful in our tithes and offering, because, you know, actually, it, it all belongs to Jesus anyway. Amen? You know, it's so good to see you all over here this morning. Katie, it's so good to see you. It's always good to see you here. And uh, let me see who else. Anybody else that is visiting us for the first time? Sister Loretta, you have somebody next to you. It's so good to have you with us this morning. God bless you. And anybody else? No, everybody else has been here before. But listen, may the Lord bless you. Have a great Christmas. And I know it's a wonderful time to be in the house of the Lord, honoring and worshiping him. Amen. Yes. Usher, would you please come forward? Let's go to the Lord this morning with the tithes and offerings. And uh, like I always say, let's be thankful for what God has done for us. Brother Joe, lead us in a word of prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Father God. As our brother reminded us, Father, everything belongs to you, Father God. And this year you've just been, uh, just multiplied our blessings, Father God, especially here at church, our brothers and sisters, Father God. So bless these tithes, bless these offerings, continue to be with them this is coming year. And just we're going to be sure to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. These are the Philippine uh, people. Uh, we're planning to be there in March of this coming year. And uh, these folks are hard workers. Yeah. And uh, you don't have more than one picture? Four of them? You already showed them all four? That was quick. <clears throat> Show them again, but slow. The churches in Mexico are also doing very well. We got good reports and uh, a lot of young people, a lot of children. <clears throat> you see what they're meeting under, folks? <laughs> yeah. So there's work to be done down there, and I know God's going to help us too. 
do what we can do. Amen. Give God the Lord a hand of praise for that work of God. Praise God. Y'all look pretty good. Down in him, friends so kind and true. I will tell you, shall we start again? Hope we do much better. Yeah. Anyway, they're, they're just coming. You know, electronics are like that. I would love to tell you just what I think of Jesus. Was I found in him, a friend so kind and true. I will tell you how it changed my life completely. It's something that no other friend would do. No one else could care for me like my Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he no one else to take the sin and darkness from me but oh how much he cared for me once my life was filled with sin and so much something my life was filled with misery and so much more that the loving Savior places loving arms around me and he led me in the way that I should go nadie pudo amarme como mi Cristo es incomparable su su amistad pues nadie pudo redimirme del pecado solo él y su bondad no one could do for me nor for you what Jesus can do he will do it this morning if you're ready to be changed Give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. He'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. He will give you rest for your weary soul. Because he's a loving God. Give him glory this morning. Come on, church. I wish for you and uh, from my family my son in the faith cat and also my son from Birdland Frankie my parrot I bring you greetings that's my family amen God bless you folks and Merry Christmas, and uh, may the Lord grant us a better year than we had this year. And may the Lord drive our president far away from us <clears throat> and give us a new one that can get something done. I really didn't have any, <clears throat> excuse me, inkling I wanted to, I thought I wanted to uh, speak to you about Jesus, but uh, I... Um, I began to think about what God has been doing, and uh, I'm so glad that my sister here didn't even get a black eye from that 
<coughs> football I hit her with. <coughs> and um, she's a real trooper. But you know what? The Lord saved her and filled her with the Holy Ghost. And I, <coughs> you know what? And I think pretty soon, if she wants it, we might be having a wedding. Whether Danny wants it or not. Yeah. Amen. That's the only way. You know, yes, the only way. Hit the road jack and come back no more. But uh, no, God's in a miracle in your lives, guys. He loves you. Danny grew up in the gospel. He knows the word of God. And, and I know he loves the Lord. And I got a feeling that last Sunday night or last Sunday something, I think I saw him praying. And I think he was telling the Lord he's ready to walk with Jesus. Keep praying for them, all right? I want to talk to you about almost. Almost. Yeah, I found that word interesting last night as I was going through my, uh, some of my writings. I remember a long time ago, like 40 years ago, <clears throat> I preached a message for a gangbanger here from San Dimas. Danny was a real gangster. As a matter of fact, I still have an arsenal of weapons I bought for him, from the family to help them. <clears throat> raise money for his burial. But I felt that I wanted to share this thought with you. Almost. Say it with me. <clears throat> Almost. Everybody. Almost. You know, General Douglas MacArthur said, there is no security on this earth. There is only opportunity. When you dismiss an opportunity you may miss a chance of success. Look in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning in verse 44. John, the Gospel, 12, beginning in verse 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I'm come alive into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, hath one that judges him, the word that I have spoken, <clears throat> the same shall judge him in the last day. For not, I have not spoken of my own, he said, for I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. <clears throat> and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. There's, there's a story of a Dutch farmer in South Africa who was so, he would sit on this stony ridge in his property it crossed his farm, and he would continually mourn his land would not produce much. He was only too happy to sell it for $25,000 to someone else. Now, the men who bought the farm discovered gold and opened a gold mine right under the rocky ridge where the farmer used to sit and pity himself. So close, and yet so far away. This has been the sad story of many people. So I would like to speak to you on the subject of how so often people almost, say almost, 
almost made the right decision, made the right choice. They came close, but not close enough. In the Bible, we have stories of individuals who almost followed, but for whatever reasons, they didn't. And so someday, someday, they will remember that they almost made it into the kingdom of God. There are many almost in a lifetime. Are you listening? Amen. Most lives have regrets. Most lives have things that they wish they could have done otherwise. Land we should have bought. The position we almost accepted. The stock we almost bought. The guy, the gal I could have married. Yes. I was talking to my jeweler friend and we were talking about gold. <clears throat> By the way, it's going to go up again. So buy some gold. Don't go crazy, but buy some. Anyway, about uh, 30 years ago, or so, um, don't quote me on that, but he told me that gold was going to go up. In those days, an ounce of gold was like three, four hundred dollars. But I didn't really listen, and he wasn't emphatic about it. He himself only invested like 10,000. Uh, guess what the ounce of gold is today? You can Google it on your own time, but it's over $2,000. If you would have invested $20,000 of gold, you'd have a nice little nest egg there. But listen to me, friends. I believe this morning that no greater regret will be as painful as that of those who almost said yes to Jesus. Can you imagine spending all eternity in a hell hole and having the devil tell you, you sucker, you almost made it. You could have escaped this, but I fool you. Wow, what torment. There are men that I have met in institutions from Terminal Island to Angola Prison in Louisiana. The story is the same. Men filled with regrets. I wish I hadn't gone drinking out that night. I wish I had not smacked her. I wish I would have not grabbed that pistola. But now they're in there for life and they'll never come out. And you ought to see those grown men, anywhere from 25 years old to 80 years old, crying like babies, coming to the altar and expecting God to forgive them and maybe receive some comfort to continue their life sentences. Well, For some reason or other, many folks never accepted Christ. They thought they would. They were going to, <clears throat> they really wanted, they really meant to. Can you imagine having to live forever in eternity, as I already said, with a haunting memory of almost becoming a Christian? Those who will have the greatest torment and regret will be those who had the most or perhaps many opportunities to receive Jesus. People have said to me, oh, I'll receive Christ, Pastor. I'll give my life to Jesus after my, 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 my sister's wedding. <clears throat> after the New Year's party, you know. You hear me? Amen. All right. Many people vacillated between two opinions one of these days we can avoid other people's mistakes folks 
Thank you for that week, amen. I said we can avoid other people's mistakes. Romans 15, 4 says, For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have what? Hope. Stories of people's lives in the Bible are there, ladies and gentlemen, so we can learn from their mistakes and avoid them. We need to avoid the pitfalls of presumption. Presumption. Proverbs 16.25 says, There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end of that road leadeth to what? Death or destruction. Disobedience to the word of God creates then a vicious cycle of the same pitfalls. Ignoring the outcome of others and their experiences, I think would prove to be a fatal mistake. Jesus said, do like they tell you, but don't do like they do. That's a good word of advice. Escucha la palabra, pero no sigas su ejemplo. No hagas lo que otras personas hacen. Disobedience to the word of God that creates pitfall after pitfall. And what happens is that if you don't read the writing on the wall, you're liable to fall in the same hole, right? Beware of peer pressure. Beware of family pressure. We have that today. Well, if you don't come to our party, we're not going to... So what? You know, people try to force you. Well, if, you know, you know, I don't care for that stuff. You don't tell me what to do or what I want to do or what I should do. I'm going to do what I want to do out of a good heart. Right? Well, you better do this. Stick it. I mean, hey, don't tell me what to do. Don't demand from me. You have no power over me. You don't own me. Give me $100,000, maybe I'll come. Well, you know, if you want to put pressure on me, show me the money. <laughs> I know a preacher in Los Angeles, this woman offered him $2 million to marry her. And he still didn't do it. Good, it's stupid, I think. Take the money and divorce her the following week. <clears throat> Get something out of it, I mean. You offer me some good money and I'll talk to you. No, I'm just kidding. Come on, folks, relax. Put a smile on your face. Somebody made me smile this morning because they brought me a nice large avocado. Merry Christmas. I'm going to enjoy that puppy. You see, among the chief rulers also, many believed on Jesus. But because, you see, they were threatened by the Pharisees, uh, they did not confess the Lord Jesus because, you know, they were afraid they were going to be kicked out of the synagogues. They were pray, uh, afraid to be expelled from their Jewish uh, religious and social life. They prefer what their peers thought about them than giving that up to follow Jesus. If you go and think more about what people say about you, you're lost, man. You compromised already. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Today, many come short of becoming Christians due to poor pressure, peer pressure. Remember when you were in high school, you smelled, you combed your hair, you dressed according to your peers, right? Come on, agree with me at least once. <laughs> Hello, I'm not trying to call you a dumb dumb. It's just that we go along with, you know, to get along and to fit in the group, right? 
Only two people believe that? You've ever been influenced by anybody? I was at... What is that store we go to across the street? Huh? Stater Brothers. I was at Stater Brothers and I'm riding in my little low rider, you know. I like the little carts. And I made a swing around the bananas. This lady comes. Yeah, you know, the, the fruit. This lady comes and she gets close to me and she says, what is it that you're wearing? I go, well, uh, she referred to my cologne. And I told her, she goes, oh, my husband's got to, he's got to get some of that. So, you know, we influence other people and we impact other people, even indirectly sometimes. If my wife changed her hair to red or platinum or blue, people always, oh, how you do here? Where you get your hair? You know, whatever. People will do that, right? That's why all the women today out there in the world are walking like this. Aren't they? Goodness gracious. How big do they want to get? My goodness. This lady was eating. We were in a restaurant, my sister and I. And Kat. This lady came over here. She was eating and it was like watching a, like a fish. <laughs> trying to eat. My sister was tripping out on her. <laughs> I said... <laughs> Because her, her lips were so swollen, uh, they pump them up with whatever. And it was, it was comedy. It was comedy. We influence other people. That's right. Today, many come short of becoming Christians due to peer pressure. Because they much rather please their friends than please God. Jesus will not play second fiddle to anything. He wants to become numero uno in your life. Let's go to Mark. I mean, John, let's go back to Mark. Uh, oh, no, part of Luke. Mark. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Mark 10. Right about verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled down and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There's none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto the Lord, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, he loved him, had compassion on him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy well, sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, Take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad. How? He was sad at that saying. And went away grieved. For he had great possessions. The Lord requires that we surrender to him. That which holds and commands the very reins of our heart. Where your heart is, there is your what? Treasure. So who would almost become Christians are turned away when they realize it's going to cost them something to follow Jesus. The sacrifice becomes too great. It is foolishness to propose or offer a gospel in where there are no sacrifices, like the modern church, the modern you know, movement today. And I'm not talking about traditional communion or whatever. For many, the world still has a greater, the world has a greater attraction and pull. And I already mentioned some of them. One more drunken party, 
one more high, one more hit, one more illicit encounter, <clears throat> and on and on. And many will become Christians, many who would become Christians, are held back and bound by this present world. They can't seem to be able to shake off the world and its lusts. Often worldly success and materialism seem more attractive than caring for a world to come. The here and now is more important than the sweet by and by. Jesus said, don't love the world nor the things that are in the world. Amen? You reading the same Bible I do? He knew very well that all the things of this world are designed to appeal to us more than the things of Christ. <clears throat> was Jesus tempted with the things of this world? Was he? Some of you are not too sure. You need to read your Bibles. Yes, he was. He was promised all the kingdoms of this world. Without going to the cross. The prevailing philosophy of the hour is eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. You know, there are literally millions of people, church, who would be Christians, who don't follow and live for Jesus because they want everything right now. Some of that hideous doctrine of kingdom now is part of this situation. Worldly, carnal, sensual people who only live for today, who live for the present moment only. And then there are others that compromise as they're going along, like I heard of two main preachers this past week. Sad. Sad that they've done so much, but they never let go of the world. Still, some of that snake is curled on, there in their hearts. And it pulls them. I thank God I'm not a dried up alcoholic. I'm glad I'm a delivered alcoholic. Right, I was set free back. Amen. Give the Lord, give him glory. Amen. And God can do the same for you. God can do the same for you. He'll set you free. And so again, the modern church today just doesn't know much about the power of God. But it is the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. And many of these so-called preachers, I'm talking mega church preachers, that are falling today is due to that carnality and that worldliness that they allow to creep back into. Maybe once God really did a work, but little by little, and it'll happen to you if you let those things creep in. Are you hearing me? We need to be careful. You will hear more and more of these preachers falling because one temptation that the world cannot withstand is worldliness. I've had to literally shut things down not to allow certain things in our ministry here. And I preach it wherever I go. Worldly, carnal, sensual people who only live for today, who live for the present moment only. Moses, the man of God, looked beyond this present world and decided the future looked much better than the present. A Roman king by the name of Agrippa said to Paul, Paul, you almost, almost convinced me to become a Christian. Yeah. He was almost persuaded by the Apostle Paul to become a Christian. Some people almost became Christians, but peer pressure defeats them. For some people, the sacrifice, the price is too great. If you cannot turn your back on this world and the things of this world, people's opinions and what have you, <clears throat> you're never going to make it. You'll fall prey to their pressure. How I fought many times 
And I still have to make a stand because not everybody holds the same convictions. But if you're going to be for real and stand firm, even those of your own family are going to be your own enemies. Well, who do you think you are, holier than thou? You know? Well, go ahead. You go ahead and you go ahead and, and, and go go clubbing. You go ahead and go dancing and you go ahead and go drinking and what have you. And you'll find out. You might as well make up your mind. Like I had to back in nineteen seventy when the Lord called me. It wasn't easy. But I had to think about all that it would mean. For many people, the things of this world win them over. Others are too busy gratifying their souls, living only for the now. I tell people always and remind them, whatever you do in this world, keep, keep a view of eternity in mind. Keep your personal accountability clear before God. Because we're here one day, we can be gone tomorrow. And to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Eventually, I believe, everyone who almost become a Christian, a follower of Christ, will have all eternity to think about the things that hinder him. If we could just for a moment, church, be given the opportunity to hear the sounds of the damned, we just might hear the eternal wail of countless voices saying, I almost became a Christian. I almost made it. Look at the story that Jesus told in Luke 16. That rich man was down there being tormented in the flames of hell. And he didn't ask for a glass of water. He said, Lord, said, Abraham, Father Abraham, just let Lazarus dip the tip of his finger and come into, because I'm tormented in these flames. There'll be the crying and gnashing of teeth. Are you ready to meet the Lord? You made up your mind to follow Jesus all the way. If you haven't, you'll have a chance this morning because I will not close this service for giving you an opportunity to get right with God, to proclaim him as your Lord. My dear friends, it doesn't have to be that way for you. You know why? Because you're still here. It's not too late. Jesus, through me and because of the season, is reaching out to you. Why? Because he loves you. He cares for you. You're not here by chance. God designed all this with you in mind. He wants you to spend eternity with him in heaven. That's why he's waited so long. And all you have to do is receive his forgiveness and give him your heart. Just like I did to that old lady there in the apartments across from the Catholic Church. And I took out a dollar and I put it in her hand. And I said, this is a gift for you. But it won't be yours until you receive it and you hold it. She took the dollar. I said, you got the dollar? She said, yes. I have the dollar. I said, well, as long as you keep that dollar there, you remind yourself that Jesus is your Savior, then you're going to be all right. I asked her daughter to ask her, does she still have the dollar? Yeah, she says, she won't let go of that dollar. I know, well, that's the way you got to do with Jesus. Pastor Manuel Torres was ministering in a convalescent center over here. 
And there was people, you know, that had special needs. And there was this gentleman in the back, Hispanic fellow. I forget what his name was. And Brother Emmanuel was explaining to them that just like you have to have a passport to go out of the country, you need a passport to go to heaven. Then he told them that passport is Jesus. You need Jesus. He prayed for them. Not thought more about it. Next week he came. And right from back of the building, that gentleman said, Hey, Pastor, I got the passport. I got Jesus in my heart. That's what it is. You got to receive him. It doesn't happen automatically. You have to repent, receive the faith that Jesus gives you, and be born again. If you do that, then your life will change. Don't take chances. You don't have to be an almost case and almost made it. You can make it if you give Jesus a chance. Now God has put this together. You're here this morning. You know in your heart if you have truly accepted Christ or you mean business with God. You're going to serve God. You're not just plain religion. You just don't want to appear religious to your peers or your families. But you believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins. Maybe you've never openly or publicly have confessed the Lord Jesus. Well, this morning you have that opportunity. I'm going to invite you to stand with me, please. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, bow your heads. Now, just saying these words is not going to save you. But believe in them. And exercise in faith. The Lord will meet you. Because he loves you. And he appointed this time and moment for you to be here. And to hear what you heard. And to be able to say, yes, Lord. And not leave here and be an almost, an almost made it, almost could have been saved. God loves you, friend. He really does. Please, I'm going to invite you to pray with me and repeat after me. We call this a sinner's prayer, but it could be your prayer. Mean it. Say it from your heart. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry for my sin, the things I've done, the way I've lived. Please forgive me and cleanse me with your precious blood from all unrighteousness. With my mouth, I confess the Lord Jesus. In my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, and he is alive. This very moment, this very hour, I accept Jesus Christ as the Savior of my soul. And I make him the Lord of my life. And according to God's word, which cannot lie, I believe, I am cleansed, I am washed, I am saved. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank him. If you prayed that from your heart, thank him. Say, Lord, thank you for saving my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for...
coming into our lives, into our hearts, giving us opportunity, Lord. You don't want any almost here. You want everyone to say yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. And we thank you for what you're doing in our hearts and in our lives this very morning. Be with those who are watching on YouTube, streaming live, dear God. Touch their lives and may they also come to know you, Savior, whom to know is to have eternal life. Thank you once again for all of your blessings. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And all the God's people said amen, amen and amen. Come on, church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Well, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Well, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Well, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Well, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Well, I'm so glad when Jesus lifted me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Well, once I was a sinner, but Jesus set me free. Well, once I was a sinner, but Jesus set me free. Well, once I was a sinner, but Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus, once again, once I was a sinner, but Jesus set me free. Oh, once I was a sinner, but Jesus set me free. Well, once I was a sinner, but Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus set me free. Oh, shouting victory, I'm on my way to heaven. Yes, yeah, shouting victory. I'm on my way to heaven, shouting victory, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus is me, hallelujah, praise God, that's all it is, now the rest is up to us. today eat slowly make it last of the evening call your loved ones 
Call your mothers and fathers. Wish them a Merry Christmas. Love you, folks. Thank God for you. Amen. Go with God. He'll go with you. Be friendly one with another.